Hello there, and welcome to Weird Music on the Glumberger channel. This is of course the show where we, you know, take little dives into very weird and unusual albums that are out there, have a big discussion of sorts, you know, just dive into them, sort of. <laughs> um, so, in today's episode, uh, we're going to be covering an artist who I've actually mentioned quite a few times on this channel already in past episodes. And I've genuinely wanted to cover this, um, this particular artist's albums uh, on this channel, but the main problem I had was, which album do I start with, you know? <laughs> and yeah, uh, since you know, starting this channel and stuff, um, I've been literally bouncing around from album to album, decide, trying to decide which one to talk about, and in the end, the answer was the one that was right in front of me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the most obvious answer is the one that you should go with, but it is what it is. <laughs> and so, yeah, you know, um, and to be fair though, um, after deciding to dive into this particular album, it, like, I was amazed though, because uh, it just revealed this world of, you know, this whole backstory and context and this plethora of background information that really changed and shaped my understanding of the very album, which I find fascinating. So there's going to be a fair amount to cover in today's episode, so you know, get comfortable. Today I present the wonderfully immersive album Relocation Reconstruction by Jan Novak. And so, before we begin, let's ask ourselves, who is Jan Novak? Well, Jan Novak is a queer-identifying interdisciplinary artist and composer based in Los Angeles and current owner and curator of the wonderful Dragon's Eye Recordings, a digital imprint focusing on elevating marginalized voices in experimental music. And partner to the wonderful Robert Crouch, whose al album Jubilee we covered in an early episode of Weird Music, Novak's musical work also delves deep into minimalism, microsound, and sound art, you know, with Novak being a queer, self taught, partially colorblind, and dyslexic, apparently, all of which helps guide and inform his work as an artist. And so, across this you know, very extensive career, I would say, Novak has fused together, you know, explorations of both sound and light and uh, to create these incredibly unique experiences for the very audience he performs for, you know, and as a result, created a wide range of different albums and art exhibitions over his many, many years. It's an incredibly beautiful body of work, I must add, and it's one that just seems to grow and grow with each and every release. <laughs> Um, so yeah, today we're going to be looking at Relocation Reconstruction here, which is uh, you know, one of the most fascinating albums within Jan Novak's portfolio, I might add, and an album that was released on Richard Chartier's record label, Line Imprint, as its 45th official release. And so, what is Relocation Reconstruction then? Uh, well, to start with, uh, Relocation Reconstruction is... Um, it's Jan Novak's uh, first album he released on Chartier's record label Line. Um, uh, Novak's released a couple of albums on, on the label and many others as well, but this was apparently his debut for Line Imprint. <laughs> and it's one that offers us exactly, literally exactly, 42 minutes of hazy droning drifts that utilise a number of different sound sources to create this constantly moving experience. It's incredibly sparse elements just drift in so incredibly slowly, um, adding up layer upon layer that creates this incredibly minimalist, almost windy experience, I would say. <laughs> and of course, the more the track progresses, the more you start to hear different elements, you know, arriving into the scene. They, they all just drift in so effortlessly as you know, um, uh, uh, you know, as each and every one, they sort of get given their own, you know, space and time to appear as itself before drifting back into the recesses of the very composition itself. 
it's, it, it becomes this incredibly hazy yet very immersive experience that just it all unfolds so incredibly slowly you know and you know, it features a great number of elements and sound sources as we mentioned you know and yet you know despite having all these different ones it all sounds so absurdly cohesive in its own right and so yeah it, it's, it's worth mentioning and many of Novak's works you know you know many of them I would say they're these incredibly beautiful long-form drone experiences that just unfold as slowly as a glacier traversing across this landscape over the many decades it feels like and I think it's truly wonderful music like you can just sit there and just let it all just drift over you so peacefully and so calmly and as you're doing so you just get these new sounds that just gently become part of the scene. They slide in with such gentle presence, though, as though, as though it's playing the entire time in this recording, if that makes sense. Man, what a beautiful and amazing body of work Jan Novak has. <laughs> I, what I love as well, the incredible subtlety to each and every one as they... You know, as, as everything just slowly fades in, though, it all just takes as much time as it feels necessary to establish the scene itself, you know. And you'll often find in a lot of Jan Novak's works, it all, they always seem to just start with pure silence, you know, especially in the first few minutes, you know, you just get pure silence as everything just really slowly fades in so you can actually start hearing it all. And I think it's an oddly delightful thing. You know, those moments of silence you know, that open up uh, relocation reconstruction here, for example, it gives us a lot of time to start contemplating the very experience we're about to undergo. And then when you start to hear those musical motifs like just gently simmer in, you know, um, they start, you know, it's all slowly coming into the scene, basically. They bring with it such a myriad of emotions as it all starts to progress. I think it's a perfect drift, and it just pulls you along on this really emotional journey, you know, and establishes new ideas here and there the more you start to dive into it further and further, of course. And of course, I should mention, I should mention, you know, one can just sit there, and you can just let this entire experience wash over you, drift you off, you know, as you just sort of, like, let your mind wander away. and. It's, it's a lovely thing to do because you because doing so you're accompanied by the most airiest and sounding dr uh, distant drones um, like to me it's it sounds so much like standing at you know at the end of an incredibly long and dark tunnel and you can just see the faintest glimmers of light you know, visible at the furthest end you know, starting within the really dark confines before the light just slowly really slowly pours in and just reveals this whole world outside no, it's truly beautiful composition, and like what I love is you you can do that. You can let that wash over you and let your mind wander, but you can also you know listen and pay attention to exactly what it is you're hearing. And by doing so, you, you know, it it becomes such a rewarding experience as you start it starts to reveal so much more about itself. If that makes sense. And so let's ask ourselves what exactly is going on here then. So. When it comes to the album Relocation Reconstruction, we're actually incredibly blessed to have a plethora of information available to us. It tells us so much about what informs this recording, the emotions, the feelings, the history, everything that's actually going on on this. And so, in basic terms of sorts, um, Relocation Reconstruction is arguably the album length installation within Jan Novak's Relocation series a set of art installations that saw Novak um, exploring the multitude of emotional states experienced during and after relocation of one's life. And this was started back in 2009, the, relo um, uh, the relocation series. Uh, it, was, it was mostly comprised at the time of three art installations for the Lorimore project, with Novak taking environmental recordings and transforming them into these incredibly resonant and emotional art pieces. You get musical components, you get the physical space components, and some of them you had a graphic visualizer as well, and they all ex help express, you know, so much of the themes being explored with in the whole overall project, if that makes sense. And so, 
you know, when you dive into these three art installations and basically everything connected to the whole relocation uh, series, you end up getting so much context and understanding that really shapes how you view the whole project itself, if that makes sense. And so, let's dive into it all, shall we? Let's start right at the beginning then. So the project uh, begins with relocation vacant, utilizing quadraphonic sound, speakers, subwoofer, amplifier, DVD player, and pedestals. And this incident of the project utilizes the sound of the empty loft Novak lived and worked in for over four years. And it gives us this very surreal and mystifying drone that it arguably, you know, it, it's very interesting because it's all so tied to a specific place and time, literally tying us to, you know, the room that Novak was in. And it has such an awareness of a sort of emptiness, if that makes sense, you know. Um, the physical art installation for this piece, uh, for example, um, it was presented literally in an empty gallery, with the specific in, um, equipment used to produce the, uh, the sounds and stuff being on display as a part of the installation, um, rather than it being hidden away, which you'd norm more normally see. And so relocation vacant, Arguably the start of this journey of relocation, you know, standing in your now empty room, taking in the history and experience of the many years spent there, and the now dismantled and erasure of what made that space you. And literally represented to us as an empty art gallery is a very interesting, you know, artistic choice from Novak. And I think it's perhaps a perfect um, expression of the existentialism one might experience when they're standing alone in their empty room that had once been a home. And there's, there's such a sense of everything slowly reducing and minimizing as well, exploring the multitude of emotions that one's experienced, or in this case what Jan Novak has experienced, and when he underwent this, you know. And, you know, when you take it all in, it's an incredibly sparse art piece, you know, both the physical representation of it and even the musical side as well. They, they all come together perfectly to create this very existential experience. And so, moving on to part two, we're given Relocation Mobile, comprised of video, both colour and sound, projector, two headphones and a DVD player. And so within the framework of this project, uh, Relocation Mobile, it explores the journey from the old location to the new one, and the limbo that one is existing within uh, during this particular journey. Um, as, Novak's, uh, as it's said, uh, when he or she has no current home, just a destination. And what I find really interesting about this one is the visual component that accompanies the audio, um, which is utilising photos and recordings taken during Novak's long drive down the I-5 from Seattle to Los Angeles. And the video itself, as you can see, is just this blended wash of colours sourced from these images. And to me, I get the impression of when you close your eyes, for example, um, you get those blurry images that your eyes just start to make up, you know, um, as, as the light itself is trying to force its way through the gaps and you just get these, you know, the blurred horizons just uh, blending all these colours seamlessly together. I think it's a beautiful thing and with this one, it, there's a real proper existentialism to this one as it makes, it makes me feel like truly being placed outside of space and time itself and this emotional resonance as we're in the stasis of pure uncertainty. With Novak here, you know, uh, apparently examines the push and pull and the ups and downs of this emotional time that can bend one's perception of time while he or she tries to prepare for the future and let go of the past. And I think there is a phenomenal emotional resonance to this one. The, the individual experience, you know, apparently was very important in the presentation of this particular piece, hence why it was presented with headphones. This was to constrict the viewer's experience so it is solitary and truly his or her own. And as a result, I feel like this is one of the more existential pieces within the whole project though, you know, whereas Relocation vacant feels very tied to that particular space and time. Mobile feels very out of place because it's not 
tied to a specific place, if that makes sense, but it's instead tied to this oddly forward-moving momentum from A to B. And, you know, as a result, you're exploring such a such an uncertainty, such a such a worry and stuff, and I think it's phenomenal how it comes across, to be honest, and brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. And so, and so, uh, we move on to part three, relocation, dislocation, which utilises video, both colour and sound again, projector, speakers, and DVD player again. And so, dislocation sees us at the end of the whole relocation process, at the new location trying to assimilate into this new environment. Um, although the feeling of home is not yet developed. And both the audio and visual components, much like their previous counterparts, uh, they utilise recordings made in this new location. Um, it helps to express the sense of space and time being experienced during these exact moments. And the visual component of this uh, uses images of the sun shining through the roll-up door of, of Novak's new loft in Los Angeles whilst the audio components uses recording taken from inside the loft with the mic aimed at the door as a point of departure. And what I find fascinating about this one is how Novak expressed this multitude of feelings, you know, um, being, uh, by presenting it in this very darkened room, which is meant to represent the new loft. And you get given this blinding visual component representing the sunlight that's pouring into the room. And I have to say, like, you know, looking at what's available here to us, though, this installation gives us another, you know, very existential expression of the whole experience. And uh, it evokes both the uncertainty of arriving at a new place and the blinding potential that's possible that are both present near the end of the relocation process. And so, you know, whilst there is this you know, this very melancholy element to much of the drones on this one in the musical part, it's worth noting that you know, there is perhaps this somewhat sort of hopeful and wistful element to it as well, I feel. You know, um, you know, within all that uncertainty and stuff, it's expressing a sense of optimism, uh, a hopefulness for the sheer number of possibilities of the, of the future that are present, present in this new location. And I think there's a lovely beauty to that, though. Um, no, it's sort of this, that push and pull between your two halves that we so often see within these abstract ambient art, uh, art pieces, of course. Um, but it makes relocation dislocation perhaps one of the more existential yet oddly beautiful moments across the whole art project. And I think that hope within the sheer uncertainty of everything, it does make it oddly beautiful, you know? Very peculiar, but very interesting. And so, these three art installations, all exploring different stages of a relocation process, you know, taking similar approaches to existentialism, exploring different emotional and physical spaces and expressing to them it all to us in this wonderful existential experience that places us literally within the headspace of Jan Novak himself through his own presentation of his own experience. And I find it, you know, I find it so fascinating the more you dive into it, like the little similarities and differences between the three art pieces, you know, when they all have their unique qualities, but together, together the three of them all build up to something so much more meaningful, if that makes sense. But of course, the project didn't actually stop there, though. I mean, of course, of course it didn't. We're reviewing the album Relocation Reconstruction, aren't we? <laughs> But there's a little bit more to talk about in terms of the abstract of this project, you know? Um, so alongside uh, Relocation re Reconstruction, which is perhaps a culmination of many of the core themes, concepts and ideas, there is also what I'd interpret to be the live show representation of this, which was called Relocation Immersion, uh, performed between the years of 2009 to 10. And so, Utilising uh, live stereo sound, PA system, computer, and MIDI controller, Relocation Immersion sees Novak continuing, um, continuing the whole relocation project almost a year after the literal relocation event, interpreting it all with his new insights into his creative process, his understanding of it all, and as a result created this incredibly immersive live experience that utilised altered sounds from those previous works. And much like the very album we've been exploring rather esoterically in this episode, 
Relocation Immersion, you know, highlights a lot of the sound portions of the project itself, constructing this incredibly immersive experience that, once again, just drifts by so effortlessly. <laughs> and so chronologically, this brings us full circle to, back to Relocation Reconstruction, the very album we've been very strangely exploring today. And so I think, you know, with all this knowledge, with all this background information, we now have so much understanding and context for exactly what is being presented here on Relocation Reconstruction. The album itself, much like uh, what we just discussed previously, Relocation Immersion, it utilised altered sounds of the previous work in the Relocation series, reconstructing them all into this incredibly slow-moving 42-minute drone composition that retains so many of those emotions established within the previous entries into the series, but also managing to express some new ideas that have come with age and understanding. And in the first place, you know, each of the compositions uh, featured such altered versions of field recordings that place us right back into that exact place and time for those particular parts of the composition itself. And as a result, I find it so interesting, you know, I, I think as well, it's incredibly interesting though, sometimes when it comes to abstract experimental works, you know, you get a lot of original intent and explanation, you know, um, you know uh, a lot of the original intent and explanation, I mean, uh, it feels almost interpretive of the emotions the artist was undergoing when composing the pieces, at least in how sometimes they try to explain it, you know, I mean, it's very difficult to explain these things sometimes. But when it comes to relocation reconstruction though, the, the entire recording is utilising these field recordings from the very moments, the very places in time that it's literally trying to express. You've got the empty room, the drive down the I-5, the new loft, these exact moments in time that were incredibly emotional and existential experiences for Jan Novak being literally recorded and utilised for the creation of the entirety of the relocation project, I find that truly fascinating. And yeah, much like when um, I reviewed uh, Jubilee by Jan Novak's partner Robert Takahashi Crouch, um, discovering all of this background information really helped change and shape my understanding of this particular album. And it now gives it a context that makes it this incredibly resonant emotional experience now. And when I first heard this album, to be fair, you know, um, and every other time I listened to it um, prior to doing all this research and stuff, um, I always felt a certain calm s sense of slow movement that was bringing with this this incredibly melancholic level of anxious uncertainty. Now, there's an emotion being expressed in the very music itself that it really came across to me when I first sat down and listened to this whole album. And within it, there was something that was kind of sad for some reason, but also something incredibly beautiful about it as well. And now, with all this understanding and stuff, all this background information, I, I feel as though I understand a little bit better why this music comes across as a very sad, melancholic and all around generally profound experience. There is such a real sense of expression from Jan Novak in all aspects of this project, with him exploring the incredibly peculiar states of mind and the emotions that, that it all brings with them when undergoing such a massive relocation process. Uncertainty, anxiety, worry, maybe even fear, but on some levels, like you may have excitement and optimism for a future that is so unclear. And hence why I feel like so much of this work, from the audio to the visual component, it's all incredibly blurry. It's the sense that you can't exactly see the detail of what is exactly going on due to it all being, you know, meshed and together in such a weird, peculiar way. Both your emotions and the very art piece being expressed here. And so, there's a bit more to talk about though. One, um, one final inst installment within the project that, you know, um, that, uh, that was also released. Uh, in 2011, Jan Novak presented Relocation Triptych, a print edition of the Relocation series. And this art piece, composed of three stills from the audio-video installation of Relocation Mobile, all having been altered ever so slightly and apparently 
all intended for the cover art of the Relocation Reconstruction album, of course. And so this instalment in the Relocation series is one that I find hard to interpret, and as having mentioned many, many times, and funnily enough, I mentioned this in uh, Robert Takahashi Crouch's video, I have no academic understanding of art and or music. <laughs> And so when it comes to interpreting things like this, um, all I can go on is my feelings, what it's making me think, and so on and so forth. And so to me, um, looking at Relocation Triptych, it feels like a physical representation of the entirety of the Relocation project. You know, it's one that can be, one that's actually being represented as a triptych in so many different ways. Like. And so to briefly explain, though, in case some people don't know, a triptych is, generally speaking, an artwork made up of three pieces or panels, generally being represented in more classical art pieces where a narrative or a sequence is being shown to you as you progress from picture to picture. And with that in mind, Novak representing the triptych in the relocation process is perhaps something that's a bit more telling to the overall project itself. Um, and so, the original art installations, vacant, mobile, dislocation, um, that could be seen as a triptych of, th of art installations, all exploring different parts of the whole narrative. And so, as well, let's look at these three pictures then, shall we? They're all from the same video, Relocation Mobile, and yet all three of them give off such starkly different emotions and feelings. So. The first one, when I look at it, absorb it, and think about what it's making me feel and think, uh, the first one makes me feel determined for some reason. I'm not sure why. The second one makes me feel incredibly melancholy. The last one, which is the one used for the cover art, of course, it makes me feel warm for some reason. And I can't explain exactly why I feel that way, but it's just how it came across to me. But also, going back to the whole triptych thing, um, it, we can kind of see how the triptych is important in shaping understanding of this whole project, you know? Um, like, there's, there's more you can go into, to be fair, but I, um, you know, I, I, I find it interesting, though, you know, that um, when I learned about the triptych thing uh, and how it connects to the project, it kind of brought with it a lot more mystery and intrigue to the whole overall project itself. And I find stuff like that delightful in abstract projects. The more you dive in, the more you start to you know, personally interpret little things here and there. And maybe that's the point of abstract art, to be fair, you know, is the audience's interpretation of their understanding of what information they've got. I'm not, perfect, I'm not too sure to be perfectly honest with you, but I just thought it was worth mentioning. But speaking of interpretation, it's perhaps mentioning one final part of this project as well, which was the release of Relocation Catalog. So Relocation Catalog is what I'd argue is a multimedia release. It combined photos of the exhibition, a CD entitled Relocation Edits, and an accompanying essay by Christopher Delaronte titled Stritation? Erosion, Deformation, Recollection, The Erased Field Recordings of Jan Novak. And the essay portion, available on Jan Novak's website, draws some really interesting comparisons and helps give us a little bit more insight into the exact processes Jan Novak utilised in the creation of these compositions. And so, De Laurenti begins by discussing the famous art piece Erased de Kooning a rather strange art piece by uh, Robert Rauschenberg where he painstakingly spent months erasing each and every part of um, the, a painting uh, by Kuhn until it was reduced um, literally back to nothings. And he uses this as a comparison to Jan Novak's works with the very field recordings he uses, you know, how Jan Novak's approach to interpolating field recordings into his own works is almost an act of reductionism as well, reducing it all down to exact specifics and ones that are born from experimentation. And there is a lovely quote within this essay where Novak says, Although my goal is to transform the field recording, I still want the tone and pace of the field recording to come through. As well as adding that the process is like a duet 
where I have a lot of control, but so does the field recording. And so with this context again, we have a bit more understanding of the literal things that are informing Novak's direction in his composition of abstract works, you know, you've got him literally uh, experimenting and reducing with field recordings down, but it's also informed by what's happening uh, during that process, what the, field, what the act is giving back to him. And they inform each other, both the field recording and Jan Novak, and I find that, I find that so interesting, you know, and I thought it was worth mentioning, you know, more context and more understanding, you know, these, these are the things that help inform us about particular pieces of abstract expressionism and helps us understand much more about what the artist is thinking, feels, or feeling, and sometimes doing on a particular art piece or album even. Speaking of though, speaking of, uh, I mean, uh, just to, before we close off though, it's perhaps worth mentioning that the Relocation Edit CD that was included in Relocation Catalog, um, uh, it comprised three edits from Vacant, Mobile and Dislocation, all of varying lengths and all offering a little bit more insight into what informed those particular movements within the overall project itself. And I think it's very interesting. You look at this entire release, this is perhaps Relocation Catalog is perhaps, you know, one of the releases within the whole Relocation series that adds the most amount of context and understanding into the whole overall project, I would feel. It's very interesting, and in a, in a weird way, it kind of ties together some of the odds and ends, if that makes sense. So with that, I think we're going to come to the end of today's episode of Weird Music. I... Yeah, this is another episode that just grew and grew and just got, and the more I just discovered more about this album, but I genuinely like things like that when you have a lot to discuss, you know. <laughs> I don't know if I've done it justice, but I just really wanted to talk about Jan, Jan Novak, and you know, I think Relocation Reconstruction is a truly beautiful album from Novak. And I, I should add as well, alongside the likes of Forms of Paper by Steve Roden and Valence by Franz Jobin, uh, these were some of my introductions you know, to the record label Line Imprint, and you know, I'm very grateful for that because I, I love discovering albums online and the kind of weird stuff they get up to. <laughs> but as well, as an album itself though, it's such a, a melancholic experience that just drifts on past, but it's one that is truly rewarding when you just sit down and contemplate the entire thing. And now with all this understanding of what preceded this particular version of the relocation project, that sense of melancholy, it makes so much more sense now, I feel. You know, throughout this album, and the many facets of the project itself, you just have this constant grappling of existentialism, trying to deal with the multitude of emotions one feels when undergoing this type of process. And I feel like you know, that confusion, that existentialism, is something that a lot of people don't generally consider or give much credence to, but it's worth thinking about though. And with that, I would like to thank you for watching today's episode of Weird Music. I wish you all the best, take care and bye bye for now. Bye bye! <laughs>